And that's what we're going to talk about, at least for a portion of this next hour. My guest today says sound doctrine is under siege. He says the Bible is being reduced or outright rejected, replaced by how people feel about whatever moral or theological topic is under consideration. My guest is going to be Dr. Mark Hitchcock, and he has a brand new book. It is titled The Coming Apostasy, Exposing the Sabotage of Christianity from Within. And he tries to sharpen your discernment because the wolves, quite frankly, are preying on the sheep like never before, just as the Bible prophesied. Let me just read from the back cover of the new book, and it says, The Bible warns us that in the last days uh, that they will be tumultuous. In our age, the world seems to be spinning out of control, creating fear, confusion, and uncertainty. In addition to violence, pestilence, and epidemics, the Bible predicts a great falling away from God in the last days. Bible teachers call it the great apostasy. Are we seeing evidence today in the church of this massive rejection of sound teaching? Eric Barger joins me in studio today. And Eric, interesting thoughts, an interesting book. Yeah, it is. It's uh, it's written in a very unique way. And it's not like every other book you've ever read on apostasy. And I really appreciate what I've read in it. Yeah, Mark Hitchcock, welcome back to the program. Well, thanks for having me again, Jan. It's great to be back with you yeah, as thank always. thank you. Mark's one of my speakers, Saturday, October the 7th, Understanding the Times 2017. We'll say more about that later. Mark, I want to quote you here. I'm going to be quoting you quite a bit here in the coming few minutes. And you say, I thought this was profound. You say the greatest danger to the church today is not humanism, paganism, atheism, or agnosticism. The greatest danger is not increasing hostility against our faith from the culture. Our greatest danger is apostasy on the inside, arising from false teachers, theological liberals who deny and distort biblical doctrine and lead others down the same path. I would agree with you. I'm quite sure Eric agrees with you, and I'm sure this prompted you to write this book, correct? Well, it did, yes. Jeff Kenley was is my co-author in this yeah. book. And, you know, we don't want to be people that are out there, you know, the sky is falling type people or something like that. When you look at our churches today and look what's happening in Christianity, this is a, a massive problem. We look at the things out there in the world and we decry those things that are happening out there in our culture and in the world. But the bigger problems are on the inside. Mm-hmm. You know, Vance Havner, the old preacher, once said, you know, it's not the, the woodpeckers on the outside, but it's the termites on the inside. Yeah. And uh, that's really what we see happening today. That's what we see in the in the Bible. It happened back with the nation of Israel. We see it even in the early church. Think about how many of the books yes. uh, that are in the early church were written to combat false teaching that was already erupting back in the, the late part, the middle and late part of the first century. And of course, the scriptures tell us that evil men and seducers will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. And, you know, we see apostasy happening today. And, and just to define that word, the word apostasy means to abandon or it means to depart. Hard, and so it's people who are abandoning or departing again from long-held truths such as you know the deity of Jesus Christ and uh, the inerrancy of the scriptures, the virgin birth of Jesus, the fact that Jesus did miracles. People are, are changing their views about hell. Mm-hmm. You know that hell either doesn't exist right. or that no one's going to go there. Um, all kinds of things are, are shifting out there in our, our culture today, theologically, spiritually. So there, there's all of this change theologically, but there's also well, I know we'll talk about this more. But there's also moral apostasy. Mm -hmm. And those two are tied together Mm -hmm. because as people go into spiritual and theological apostasy and lose the moorings and lose the the scriptures as their plumb line for what they believe, the same thing happens in the area of, of morality. And basically, biblical morality, godly living gets kind of thrown overboard, and uh, you kind of end up where we are today. So there's there's doctrinal and there's moral apostasy, abandonment, departure from the truth, and we see it all around us. When we see the tragic results of it all around us in churches and in entire denominations. Entire denominations, that is correct. And you also say, and I wanted to quiz you on this, you say many churchgoers yawn today over the truths for which their forefathers shed blood and even died. What do you meaning uh, churchgoers yawn today over the truths for which forefathers shed blood and died? 
Well, you know, what you see in a lot of churches, and again, I don't, you know, I don't want to be hypercritical of everyone else. You know, I, I try to often, you know, examine my own life to, to uh, make sure that I'm where I need to be spiritually and, and all of that. So I don't want people to think, you know, I'm, I think I'm above everybody else looking down. I'm just trying to observe and discern mm-hmm. what's happening. But I, I see people today, not even really, uh, so many people who are professing Christians, not even interested in doctrine. That's right. They're really not even interested in, in different truths. And I was just talking about that with a friend of mine the other day. He was talking about eschatology or end times, mm-hmm. you know, for as one example. Just how many people are out there, they don't even care. You know, they don't even care about different truths related to that or things that, that people used to really talk about and discuss and sometimes really disagree kind of strongly with one another about. And of course, it's, it's good in one way today because people don't seem to, to fight as much over some kinds of doctrinal issues. But the downside of that is they don't even care. You know, basic fundamental truths that, that we hold to, you know, people will go to a church where it's liberal, they don't even believe the Bible's inerrant, that it's the inspired Word of God and those things. And they'll say kind of, you know, well, it doesn't really matter whether we believe that or not. What just matters is that we all uh, know Jesus and, and kind of things like that. But who is Jesus? You know, it's another question. It's just kind of everything has just kind of gotten really squishy out there. And really with a lot of people trying to nail down what they believe, you know, someone has said it's kind of like trying to nail yeah. jello to the wall. That's my observation today. That's true, Mark. And uh, what I've seen is that, you know, we concentrate so often on the leaders and, and what they're saying and the people who get the attention who are up at the pulpit. But what's happened is slowly but surely the church has been and been taught to believe that doctrine is somehow wrong or it's uh, it's hurtful, painful you know, run from it at all cost. The feel-good gospels have replaced the truth, and people haven't studied the Scripture, haven't studied the Bible to learn what the church is all about, and that's the problem. Yet they would sit in our churches, claim to be Christians, and therein lies the problem. The sheep themselves are somewhat to blame at this point, but they've been led this direction. Well, no, you're right. I mean, over in, in 2 Timothy, is a there's a yeah. powerful statement. Of course, remember, these are the last inspired words of the Apostle Paul, and uh, he says, you know, to preach the Word, be ready in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with great patience and instruction for, and here's the reason for that, he says, the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. He's talking there about the people, about the sheep. Right, right. But wanting to have their ears tickled, they will accumulate for themselves teachers in accordance with their own desires. So people in churches and denominations, this passage is telling us, ultimately get what they want. They're going to get what they want. If they want to have their ears tickled, they're going to accumulate for themselves teachers that are going to give them what they want. And that's one of the reasons I'm so grateful here to the church I've been able to pastor now for over 25 years is that, you know, the people here want to hear the Bible, mm-hmm. and people ultimately get what they want. If they don't want that, they're going to get rid of you, mm-hmm. and they're going to bring in people who will tickle their ears. So you're right about that. I mean, what we see happening in churches and denominations, it's the people, but it's ultimately then the shepherds who've not been giving them that and been training mm-hmm. them in the importance of that that causes them, I think, to, to kind of erode into that way of thinking ultimately and slip into that. So it, there, there's fault on both sides, I think, with the shepherds and with the sheep in many places and what's happening. You're listening to Understanding the Times Radio. I'm Jan Mark Hill. I have on the line from Oklahoma, Pastor Mark Hitchcock, Dr. Mark Hitchcock, Faith Bible Church in Edmond, Oklahoma, and Eric Barger's in studio with me. We're talking about Dr. Hitchcock's newest book, The Coming Apostasy, Exposing the Sabotage of Christianity from Within. You can order this on Amazon. You can find it in your local Christian bookstore. Mark's one of my speakers. Understanding the Times 2017, Saturday, October 7th, right around the corner now, along with Amir Sarfati, Pastor J.D. Farag, and Michelle Bachman. Uh, there's no cost, no registration. Grace Church, Eden Prairie, come out early if you're going to be attending. We'll have CDs, DVDs about a month later. You also say in the book, Mark, you say, many people today pray for a great revival, and though it may happen, no such revival is prophesied. On the contrary, according to Scripture, a great apostasy is coming. Now, you know, I think we'd all like to think there could be some sort of even a mini revival on the horizon. I agree with you. I don't see it in the Bible. Uh, And yet, you know, you and I and Eric, we sound like real gloom and doom to say no such revival prophesied, only the great apostasy, the great falling away. That's what's prophesied. That's kind of discouraging. I think it can be, certainly. I mean, we want to just hold to the truth, whether it's, you know, something that's positive or something that's negative. We We want to hold to that. I do believe that in 
in the tribulation period, after the rapture mm-hmm. takes place, there will be a great revival. Yes. Then. Mm-hmm. Uh, Revelation chapter 7, you know, there's going to be a, a, a number of people, you know, that you can't even number who are yeah. going to be saved. So I think there will be great revival in the great tribulation period. But when I talk about great revival, I'm talking about during the church age. Right, right. Uh, as the church age comes to a close. And we don't see that anywhere mentioned. In fact, again, we, we read passages like, you know, the Spirit expressly says, in the latter days, you know, many will fall away from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits, doctrines of demons. Um, evil men, seducers, will grow worse and worse. I've always found it interesting, the book of Jude, a tiny little 25-verse book, is right before the book of Revelation. And I think, obviously, the books in the Bible are inspired, they're inerrant. And I think the order of the books of the Bible, mm-hmm. certainly, you know, God would, would want to have them in a certain order. And Jude, which is a book basically about apostasy, about false teaching, and how we survive in days of apostasy, is placed by the Holy Spirit right before the book of Revelation. It's kind of like the foyer, mm-hmm. if you will, mm-hmm. to the book of Revelation. So I think in many ways it's telling us that these are the conditions that are going to be present when these events begin to occur. So I don't take that as something, though, that I go around gloom and doom every day. I still do everything I can do at, our, at the church. I teach at Dallas Seminary. I come and speak at conferences like the one you're having. We hold these conferences. We do, still do everything we can do. I'm not a, a defeatist. I don't think we just throw up our hands and give up. Uh, we do everything that we can do, but I think we do all of that recognizing that there is not a promise that I know of in the Scripture of some great revival during the church age before the time of the rapture, uh, th- that it will occur. And again, if people think that that's gloomy or negative, I get up every day and I'm very positive. I'm the ultimate optimist. Mm. <laughs> I believe Jesus could come back at any moment and that his program is going to then come into full swing. But I think we want to be realists. You know, what does the Bible say? And we want to say what the Bible says and not just, you know, again, kind of come up with ideas just because they make us feel better. Like we said a minute ago, a lot of the church just wants to hear what they want to hear instead of what God is saying. And listen, I'll uh, I'll verify what you just said, too. The little bit that, that we've been around each other at conference conferences, especially at uh, Understanding the Times, you're not a uh, negative guy that walks around with a frown on your face. And, uh, you know, we have a lot of joy as Christians. We just see all these things happening, and we need to warn people about what's going on and point to the Scripture. This is a prophetic time we're in. So when you say you're positive, you are. I believe that. No, that's right. We want to be realists. We want to say what the Bible says. But I think as Christians, you know, we are the ultimate optimists. But we want to call other people to come to the Lord before it's too late. Mark, some other quotes by you or Jeff Kinley. Again, the book is the Coming Apostasy, Exposing the Sabotage of Christianity from Within, authored by uh, Dr. Mark Hitchcock. His co-author is Jeff Kinley, and have had Jeff on here a couple of times as well. I think he has another book out. You guys really are prolific in your writing, Mark. What number of book is this for you? Um, It's around 30, I think. Is that right? Like that, yeah. number 30. Yeah, Jeff has a new book out called The End of America. Yeah. Very good. I've got a copy that I've read, so it's, it's very, very well done. I have it sitting on my desk, need to read it, and you have another book out, and I want to talk to you about it a little bit later, Russia Rising, Tracking the Bear in Bible Prophecy. You have been busy. Mark, look, there's always been apostasy. We can go back 20 years. We can go back 50 years. We can go back 100 years. I think the thing that you're emphasizing when you speak and and what you're writing is that as we move further and further into the end times, the last days, according to the Bible and according to a verse you've even referenced here in the few minutes we've been on air, this intensifies, this increases, this gets worse and worse. Well, no, that's right. I think that's what's predicted in the scriptures. In fact, you know, one of the key verses, and we'll talk about this a lot at the conferences in Second Thessalonians, where it says, it's talking about the day of the Lord that's going to come, which is the coming time of the tribulation period. And it says that what day won't come unless the apostasy comes first and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the son of destruction. Mm-hmm. So there's an ultimate final, it's often called the great apostasy. It's yes. coming. And we titled the book, The Coming Apostasy. I've had a lot of people come up to me and say, well, why'd you call it The Coming Apostasy? It's already here. Yep. And that's a good point. It is but a good what, point. What we're saying is the ultimate final apostasy that's spoken of in Scripture is coming. And what I think we see then today, living in these times in which we live, is that we're now on the leading edge of that, I think. Okay. It's not happened yet, because I think that will happen and after the rapture takes place, after the church is caught up, I believe it's when this final great apostasy under the Antichrist and all that will occur. 
But what we see today is leading up to that. And I think the proliferation of this, I mean, it's just just mushrooming today. Mm -hmm. A lot of it, too, is because of all of the media that we have today and all the the ways that that apostasy and false teaching can get out there. Uh, You know, it's wonderful that we have all the Internet and television and all these various things because it's a great vehicle to get the truth out there, but it's also a vehicle for the proliferation of error as well. And I think we see that really on, on every front today. And I'm sure a lot of the people are listening probably are saying, you're right, that's happening in my denomination yeah. you know, that I grew up in. Or yeah. you know, it's, I see it happening in my church as there's a, a drifting away from the Bible, from doctrine, from truth. So the Bible tells us that as well. I've already quoted some of those verses, but First Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 to 3, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 through 3. These are passages that tell us, I think, that it's going to grow worse yeah. as time goes along. And that's what we are seeing today. We're witnessing that. And I think that's a discernible sign of the times. The sign of the times, the Bible tells us it's going to grow worse before the Lord comes back. And I think that's one of the things that we're seeing today uh, actually being fulfilled right before our eyes. Eric, I think in your apologetics ministry, you would concur things are worsening week by week, month by month. Talk about the proliferation of the messages, the wrong messages. When the mainline churches begin to apostatize, it, it took years, even decades, for the heresy to circulate to the professors and then down to the pastors of the churches. But now with the internet, error can be disseminated and circulated in just seconds, not decades. So it can go much, much faster. And the research I've done concerning what happened to the church when it began to go down in the great liberalism that we saw happen today, it's much, much quicker with more tentacles. Okay, when I get back, I want to share a personal experience with you and my audience. Don't go away. Today's edition of Understanding the Times is being heard on over 840 radio stations across America. We thank God for helping us to expand this ministry and for giving us financial partners to help cover the cost. Those who invest in this program with their tax-deductible gifts share in the rewards of proclaiming the message that Jesus is coming again very soon. We know we are reaching people. We know that through the emails and the contributions that come in. We're grateful for listeners who want this broadcast outreach to expand to other markets where it's never been heard before. For all of us on staff and the media team, thanks for giving. Thanks for helping us continue this vital ministry across the USA. You can give online at olivetreeviews.org or when you write to Olive Tree Ministries, Post Office Box 1452, Maple Grove, Minnesota, 55311. To order your own audio copy of today's program, phone 763-559-4444. More conversation with Jan, Eric, and Mark coming right up. We're now just weeks away from Understanding the Times 2017, Saturday, October 7, Eden Prairie, Minnesota, just outside of Minneapolis. No registration needed, and there is no conference fee to attend. Consider joining thousands from across America for this annual event of like-minded believers as we focus on current events and anticipate what the Bible calls our blessed hope. Speakers include Amir Sarfati. Everything is different, and it's amazing because the world is on the brink of something big. And I'm not saying that. You watch your news, you read your newspapers, and you'll see it yourself. Dr. Mark Hitchcock. And God has also set forth for us some of the signs or the things we can look for as we approach the end times. And the Bible tells us that there are discernible signs of the times that are going to pretend uh, the Lord's coming. Pastor J.D. Farag. By the way, in chapters 1, 2, and 3, the word church is mentioned 19 times. And you don't find the word church mentioned again from chapter 4, verse 1 on through the rest of the book. And Michelle Bachman. We are in your face with jihad. We are in your face in that we are going to conquer you and our values will prevail, Islamic values, not your values. That's what we need to understand. They are literally at war against the West. Be sure to make hotel reservations soon as they fill up early. We're looking forward to meeting you Saturday, October 7, from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., at Grace Church, Eden Prairie, Minnesota. Call us for more details, 763-559-4444, 763-559-4444. 
or just visit the conference page at our website, olivetreeviews.org. See you on October 7. We live in unprecedented times, and we'll help you understand them. It is. A lot of people out there today are just, they're weary. And uh, it's a lot easier to just go along with our culture, our permissive culture, that, that claims that they love everybody and they're tolerant. But what's interesting, the one thing they don't love and they're intolerant of is someone who preaches the truth of Scripture. Yeah. You know, a lot of this, too, comes from seminaries. You know, we talk about denominations, but there, there's a landslide away from okay. trusting in the Scriptures. One quick reminder, you're invited to meet and hear Dr. Mark Hitchcock in person next month at the Next Understanding the Times conference. That October 7th event begins at 9 a.m. and continues to 5 p.m. at Grace Church in Eden Prairie, Minnesota. There's no registration or fee to attend. A free will offering will be taken. Now let's return to Jan Markell and Eric Barger and their conversation with Mark Hitchcock. Take your Bible, if you have it, go to 1 Timothy. Find chapter 4 and notice the prediction that the Apostle Paul made in that passage as Paul writes to young Timothy to warn him what to expect in the future. And he says this, Now the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, speaks expressly that in the latter times, in the last days, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits, to doctrines of devils, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. It's as though they don't even care that the commandments of God and the principles of God are taught in the Bible. They throw all of that out the window, and their attitude is, we're going to do what we want to do anyhow. I want to live the way I want to live. I don't care what the Bible says about decency, morality, right and wrong, about standards for the ministry or anything else. Instead, we're promoting ourselves. We're moving into a time when people don't even have the decency uh, to conduct a church service with respect and dignity. It is as though the things of God have been demeaned. And welcome back. And that's the familiar voice of Dr. Ed Heinsen. And I'm playing clips from one of his messages on the growing apostasy because I have in the studio with me uh, my co-host Eric Barger, but online from Oklahoma is Dr. Mark. Mark Hitchcock. We're talking about his newest book, The Coming Apostasy, Exposing the Sabotage of Christianity from Within. It's a book by Dr. Hitchcock, co-authored with Jeff Kinley. I encourage you to look it up on Amazon or visit your local Christian bookstore. You'll find it there. And uh, Mark Hitchcock, let me just say this, because you list in the book, you list some reasons for apostasy. Let me talk about a couple of them. You suggest compromise and love for the world. People love sin. You suggest superficial attention to God's Word. You suggest blatant rebellion and defiance. You suggest the Bible can seem narrow and the allure of acceptance by people is so strong. And yet you say swimming uphill is difficult and tiring. Compromise is easier. That's a sad commentary, but you know, it's very, very true. Well, it is. You know, so often when someone comes out and and stands for something that's biblical, that's true, especially nowadays with all the the social media, you know, just a barrage against the person. That's why I'm not on social media very much, but, yeah. to be honest with you. But it's just a barrage against the person. They're berated. They're narrow-minded. They're bigoted. You know, they're homophobic. They're, you know, all these various slurs that are just thrown out there. And of course, the Bible tells us that's what we're gonna, going to experience. But when that kind of thing happens, there are a lot of people who just go ahead and capitulate and give in to those kinds of things and say, well, you know, I want to be loving. I want to be broad. I want to be, you know, tolerant of different things. And so it's very easy for people over some period of time, you know, again, just getting tired of swimming upstream to just to just kind of give in to these mm-hmm. things. And again, to begin to substitute their own wisdom, their own feelings about how things should be for what the Bible says. And we talk a lot, and I'll talk about this at the conference, we talk in the book a lot about compromise and tolerance. You know, there's a good kind of compromise, and there's a good kind of tolerance. You know, we all want to be tolerant people in a lot of ways. We all have to compromise in various areas, but there's a bad kind of compromise and a bad kind of tolerance when it comes to the truth of God, of God. God's inerrant word. And so 
it is. A lot of people out there today are just, they're weary. And uh, it's a lot easier to just go along with our culture, our permissive culture that, that claims that they love everybody and they're tolerant. But what's interesting, the one thing they don't love and they're intolerant of is someone who preaches the truth of the Scripture. Truth. That's right. always fascinated me. Those who claim to be so tolerant, you know, you go to, to a college campus and it, it's claimed here that we're searching for the truth. You know, that's what they would say. Far mm-hmm. be it from anyone to claim that they've actually found the truth, then you're yeah. immediately castigated as a, you know, a bigot and, and, and someone who's narrow-minded and so on. And you write, though, Mark, you say doctrinal discernment is a spiritual life skill. You learn it over time, not in a single sermon or book. And yet, you know, some people you know, I meet seem to have a bent for discerning things, and others seem to have zero discernment. There are national Christian leaders I can spot who seem to have no discernment whatsoever, which is, to me is shocking. Well, it is, and I think the way our discernment grows, though, is by maturing as a believer. And some people, just because you're older doesn't mean you're mature. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of people, I think, haven't matured. In the book of Hebrews, it says that uh, but solid food is for the mature who, because of practice, have their senses trained to discern good and evil. And so it's practice over time, and it's, it's taking in the milk of God's Word. It's growing mm-hmm. spiritually through time in the Bible and through attending church regularly, using our spiritual gifts. These basic things that we do just over and over again repeatedly in the Christian life, that's how we mature and grow. And of course, you see that in the physical realm as we grow and mature physically. Uh, you know, a 20-year-old has a lot more discernment than a 5-year-old. And the same thing is true in the spiritual realm. If we're not growing spiritually, then we're, we're not going to become more discerning. I've noticed the same thing that... Uh... It's kind of amazing that people that you would think, because they know the scriptures so well, would yeah. be way more discerning than they are. But the church has been infected by PC thinking, and it's a lot easier to go along with the crowd than get beat up. And if you're looking for a popularity, you just kind of go along with what uh, everybody thinks is right in the culture. That's mm-hmm. why so often we see in paintings and even cartoons where the one fish is swimming against the current of 50 others. So it's it's a world we're in, and it's way more prevalent today with the shout down type culture that Pastor Mark just mentioned, where people shout each other down instead of dialogue together and show each other what they're thinking, what they're they're basing their thoughts and opinions on. Yeah, and but we've already referred to this. I think the electronic world is contributing to some confusion to even particularly the internet. You're listening to Understanding the Times Radio. I'm Jan Markell. Eric Barger is in studio with me, and I have on the line Dr. Mark Hitchcock, who's co-author of a new book with Jeff Kinley, The Coming Apostasy, Exposing the Sabotage of Christianity. From within. We'll be talking about some of these issues at Understanding the Times 2017, now just a few weeks away, Saturday, October the 7th. Grace Church, Eden Prairie, Minnesota, that's just outside Minneapolis, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Other speakers include Amir Sarfati, Pastor J.D. Farag, Michelle Bachman. And we go from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Encourage you to come out probably at least 45 minutes early just to get a good seat. And uh, this is a mega church. We had about uh, 6,000 in attendance last year. We expect a big crowd again this fall just because folks are seriously trying to understand the times, contend for the faith, and many want to become watchmen on the wall. You know, gentlemen, I just contributed a chapter to a new Terry James book, and the book Terry has written is going to be titled Deceivers. And uh, he asked me to write a chapter on some of the apostasy in the church here in the last 100 years or so. And, And here's just a few things I highlight. And please give me your response here. I I talked about, as Eric has referred to, the mainline Protestant mistake of 100, 120 years ago, evangelicals going down that same pathway, churches going seeker-sensitive, gospel light, being feel-good, experience-driven. I talked about the postmoderns, the emergent, talked about the so-called laughing revival, the Toronto blessing back in the 90s. These are things I knew nothing of when I started in ministry. talked about the new apostolic reformation talked about Protestants flirting with Catholicism, mystical Christianity being promoted by Richard Foster, Henry Nouwen, Thomas Merton, the contemplative prayer, Christian yoga, walking the labyrinth. I talked a little bit about the religious left and social justice, and I can consider the fact that churches have dropped eschatology and and support of Israel to be part of the great falling away as well. Many of these issues were non-issues 25 years ago, and today they're all raging. Your response, Mark? Well, 
you know, you're right. I mean, you can trace the history of this, of what we've seen. And again, I think what this is a discernible sign of the times. It's just you've seen just this march, as you mentioned, the mainline denominations. It just kind of kept going. But I think, you know, a lot of this, too, comes from seminaries. You know, we talk about denominations, but there, there's a landslide away from okay. trusting in the scriptures. And I teach at Dallas Seminary down in Dallas, Texas. And Dallas Seminary is a good seminary. I wouldn't be there if it wasn't. But I'm aware of what's happening in, in a lot of other places. And the liberalism that's there, you know, there's a great statement I think I heard David Jeremiah make once, you know, liberals have taken the Bible away from us, you know, because they deny the Bible. All the people today, the feel-gooders and experienced experiential people have taken us away from the Bible. You know, it's kind of both things. People are taking the Bible away from us, and then yeah. other people are taking us from the Bible and saying, well, you don't really need the Bible. It's just all about your own experience and what you think. And, you know, if there's things in the Bible that kind of support what you believe, then you kind of use those. But again, the Bible is not the plumb line. We don't go to the Bible and say what the Bible says that I believe. That's what I believe. What the Bible says about how I live. That's how I want to live. It's just kind of piecemeal, maybe here and there. You know, kind of some feel-good things from the Bible that people want to believe. So we've seen just this steady march of apostasy. But I think within the last ten to twenty years, yes. it's on steroids. On now, steroids. Yes. What we've seen. As and, I was doing this chapter, Mark and Eric, I felt I should be doing a book. Since just just because the the, the list is so long of things that have gone haywire, as you say, even in the last 10 to 20 years, certainly in the last 30 years, I didn't even get into this so-called hyper-faith. This, let me play a quick soundbite. Somebody's son is going to be set free from alcohol because of your $1,000 sleep. Somebody is going to avoid a divorce because of the $1,000 seat. Some girl on drugs whose mama's been praying for her is going to be set free from drugs because of a thousand and what I make happen for others Ephesians 6 8 God will make happen for me I don't want you to call until I finish my prayer and as soon as I finish my prayer I want you to go to the phone dial the number on the screen and simply say I'm one of the 1,000 I'm going to faith in somehow in 90 days a thousand dollar seed you may already have the thousand it may be something you put aside for retirement or a college or a vacation. You may have put some money aside that nobody knows about and God's giving you a picture. It may be in the bottom of your closet. It may be in a sock. Maybe between your mattresses. It may be in an account that nobody knows about but you and God. That's not your harvest. That thousand dollars won't get you anywhere until God touches it. Again, the wolves preying on the sheep. It's endless. That's what we have out there today, and it's again, that's a fulfillment. I mean, when you read Second Peter chapter 3, you read Jude, it talks all in there about false teachers, and again, it's not all of them, but often there's greed involved. Yep. You know, love for money and greed and those kinds of things. So, and that's what that's what you basically see there. It's just, you know, the old saying, not, they're not praying for people, they're yep, praying, praying on, on people. people. Yeah. yeah. But you write, Mark, the relationship between the apostasy and the Antichrist is clear. The final great falling away will prepare the world for the reception of the final Antichrist. No, that's right. I mean, I think, you know, again, Second Thessalonians chapter 2 is where we see this idea of the final apostasy. You know, the, the day of the Lord, the tribulation won't come, it says, until uh, the man of sin is revealed and the apostasy comes. And I think those two things are related. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, the they old are. saying here I've heard years ago, you know, the Bible began with the sin of man and it ends with the man of sin. A man who's going to come and declare that he's God, that's going to be the final ultimate apostasy, the ultimate final abandonment and rebellion against God. It's where a man comes and claims that he is God. But I think that what we see in our world today, again, once once people abandon the scriptures, as I've mentioned this several times now, this plumb line or mm -hmm. the standard or what we have, then people will believe anything and will accept anything. And more and more we see in our culture, the Bible being abandoned. Um, even people who claim to believe it uh, many times don't read it. They don't really know what it says. They don't have any discernment. They just kind of pick and th choose things here and there. And so I think what's happening in our world today, the world's being set up for the coming of this ultimate final apostasy. Then you're going to have the rapture that's going to take place. All the believers are going to be taken out of the world and be gone. And so what you're going to have left, really what's left of the so-called church will just be the professing church people who don't really possess Christ, but just 
profess to know him, and that will even be become more rampant than into apostasy. And ultimately, this man of sin is going to arise, the world's going to receive him, and uh, the world's going to be plunged into darkness unlike uh, anything it's ever seen before. You and Jeff make a great point as you point out how that happens, that uh, many people profess to be Christians. They profess these things, and that section of the book, to me, really spoke. Folks, if you have friends or loved ones who are claiming to be Christians but not following the Scripture, this is no pick and choose, as we used to say in the South. This ain't a pick and choose thing. This is all or nothing. And the problem is, instead of taking the Bible as a work from God, the entire Bible, every word, we decide to take a line or two whenever we feel like it. That's what's happened to us because we don't know sound doctrine. If I could sum up what we've talked about and what you just said, I think, Eric, and, and this comes out of your book again, Mark, and that is telling people they can believe whatever they want and to live however they want is much more comfortable than telling people the truth, but only the truth can set them free. Why don't we conclude this topic on that kind of a thought, Mark, but only the truth can set people free. And Eric, you've said it so it's so much more comfortable and convenient to, to dance around the truth, but only the truth is going to set people free. Well, no, that's true, and it, but it's even true in this life. People think that when they go out and can live how they want to live and believe what they want to believe, that they're free, but actually they're enslaved. And a strange irony in the Bible is when we come to know Christ as our Savior and believe in Him and become servants of Most High God, that's when we're really set free. Tragically, the people that think they're free are enslaved. Yes. And they think we're enslaved to some kind of teaching that we have to follow or whatever, but we're the ones who are free. And there was a great quote years ago that someone made, you know, that the main goal of life is not to find our freedom, but to find our master. And when we find our master, that's when we really find true freedom. It's easier to believe those things. I mean, that's Satan's lie. He's going to tell people, hey, be free, you know, throw off the shackles and, and come and live how you want and believe what you want. And that's his lie. Uh, but ultimately, it's going to lead to heartache in this life, and it's going to lead to eternal separation from God in the life to come. But uh, there's nothing greater in this life and certainly in the life to come than being a servant of, of the Most High God and following Him, studying His Word, trusting in Him, living our lives powered by the Spirit. And that's where true freedom really comes and true joy and peace really come. Again, and come on out and meet Dr. Mark Hitchcock Saturday, October the 7th, Grace Church, Eden Prairie, Minnesota. It's right outside of Minneapolis. We'll have CDs and DVDs about a month later. Other speakers include Amir Sarafati, Pastor J.D. Farag, Calvary Chapel, Kaneohe, Hawaii, and Michelle Bachman. And you hear all of these folks on this program often. As a matter of fact, you've heard a number of them at a number of my conferences. Mark Hitchcock's been to at least four or five of these events, as has uh, Amir and uh, Michelle. And so come on out. It starts at 9. We finish at 5. And you can get a lunch ticket as you walk in the door, or you can bring a lunch if you'd like as well. If you want to come out a little bit early, I would suggest coming out at least 45 minutes early. There's lots of seating, but uh, last year we needed to use a few overflow rooms as well. Uh, seating is for 4300 Here's where I want to go in my last segment. And I think we're going to divert just a little bit, gentlemen, and talk about perhaps some current events. But I'm led to do that because Mark actually has a second new book out. It's titled Russia. Russia Rising, Tracking the Bear in Bible Prophecy. I have read the other one, The Coming Apostasy. I've not read Russia Rising. You can find both at Amazon. You can find them in any Christian bookstore. We're not carrying these products, so best not to call here. You certainly can get a CD of any program, including this program. You can get become a CD subscriber. You need to call us on that and get a program. Every couple times a month, we mail them out. So I want to go, Mark and Eric, a little bit into some current events, including Russia Rising rising. I want to ask Dr. Mark Hitchcock uh, his opinion about the uh, North Korea and p perhaps where North Korea fits into the scenario of the last days. And we will do that. I'm going to take a couple of minute time out here, come back and wrap things up. We have a short segment. Eric Barger is in studio with me as we conclude my interview with Dr. Mark Hitchcock back in just a couple of minutes. <laughs> Two books written by today's guests are being featured on this edition of Understanding the Times Radio, both of Mark Hitchcock's publications, The Coming Apostasy, Exposing the Sabotage of Christianity from Within, and Russia Rising, Tracking the Bear and Bible Prophecy, can be found at your local Christian bookstore or at Amazon.com. We believe we're living in the time God's Word calls the labor pains. Before our very eyes, we're seeing how the Bible's predictions are coming to pass. It's important to stay informed and up-to-date on what's happening in the world around us. 
You can access the latest news headlines when you visit us at olivetreeviews.org. The web address again, olivetreeviews.org. Audio copies of today's program can be ordered at 763-559-4444. We welcome your tax-deductible gifts at Olive Tree Ministries, Post Office Box 1452, Maple Grove, Minnesota, 55311. Today's conversation continues right after this. Thanks to all of you who either pray or financially support this radio outreach. If you appreciate the inconvenient truth coming to your neighborhood, would you think about a one-time tax-deductible gift to Olive Tree Ministries? We have served the Christian community across North America and the world for 16 years. This ministry and radio outreach are committed to bringing you news and information you won't find many places. We are also committed to bringing you the good news that Jesus Christ is in charge of a decaying world and he offers a lifeline of hope to everyone who calls on his name. You can give online at olivetreeviews.org or you can call 763-559-4444, 763-559-4444 or drop us a note, Olive Tree Ministries, Box 1452, Maple Grove, Minnesota, 55311. That's Box 1452, Maple Grove, Minnesota, 55311. We have a message about today and tomorrow because the King is coming back. We just want you to be ready and to know where you will spend eternity. In today's world, who do you trust for good insight on current events? For that matter, who do you trust for good Bible commentary? America is full of fake news and false teaching. That's why we want to offer you an alternative to both. We are Understanding the Times Radio with Jan Markell, and our main objective is to tell you the truth about current events as they relate to a biblical worldview. Join us each week on this station for a source you can trust. Folks, this ministry has written a little end time study guide. Are we living in the last days? For your neighborhood group, group in your church interested in these topics, you can cover it in 12 weeks. It's got built in questions in the study guide. Check it out in my store, olivetreeviews.org. It's in all of my newsletters, print and e newsletters, or give my office a call. It's $9 for one copy. You can get 10 copies for $60. And those who have an interest in this topic, you can just have a 12-week study, and it's not detailed, it's not complicated. Trump administration officials say they're pushing for a diplomatic solution to the North Korea crisis, even as the Pentagon examines all its military options. And Secretary of State Rex Tillerson wrote an opinion piece in this morning's Wall Street Journal. They say the U.S. is not interested in regime change in North Korea. They also say Washington is willing to negotiate with Pyongyang if the regime ends its provocative threats, nuclear tests, and missile launches. Next month, Dr. Mark Hitchcock addresses our annual fall conference. We hope to see many of you at Grace Church in Eden Prairie, Minnesota on October 7th. We return now to Jan and Eric's discussion with Mark Hitchcock. Remember, this program is always posted to my website, olivetreeviews.org, olivetreeviews.org, Saturday morning. And we've taken on some new stations. We're on between 830 and 840 radio stations around the country, heard electronically around the world. You can get a CD of any program, become a CD subscriber. Follow us on our Facebook, Jan Markell's Olive Tree Ministries, and on Twitter at Olive Tree Men. We're talking for the hour with one of my conference speakers, Dr. Mark Hitchcock, and we opened the program two segments, heavily talking about the rising apostasy, the title of the book is The Coming Apostasy. We're going to transition a little bit. Mark actually has a second book out. Both of these are quite new. Russia Rising, Tracking the Bear in Bible Prophecy. You'd have to find it on Amazon or in a Christian bookstore. And obviously, Russia's in the news. Russia's meddling all sorts of places, including the Middle East. And Prime Minister Netanyahu, 
recently went and visited with Vladimir Putin. Mark, quickly, what were your thoughts when these two gentlemen met? This is now a couple weeks ago. Well, I think, you know, if you're a Prime Minister Netanyahu, I mean, you're going to do whatever you've got to do to try to get any help from anybody. You know, I think he realizes that Russia is right there on his northern border in Syria. You know, all that chaos in Syria that's happened there with Bashar al-Assad and his regime has brought Russia right there on Israel's mm-hmm. northern border and Iran as well, which are two of the nations mentioned in Ezekiel 38 and 39. Right. So I think, you know, Netanyahu realizes and understands that the real power broker in all of this is Russia, that they're the key, and uh, that Putin is the one really who, who's pulling the strings with all this, because they abandoned Assad. He could, he could fall so quickly. So, right, right. Uh, you know, with Netanyahu, he's trying to do whatever he can do to try to calm the situation there, find out what's happening, you know, try to talk uh, sense and reason into Putin. So he's doing everything he can, I'm sure, to try to keep everything as calm as he can and, and certain as he can of what's going to happen up there in Syria and how that's all going to play out. I think he's wise to do that, but I'm sure that he understands that Putin is not his friend. <laughs> yeah. Would you agree with me? And I, and I think, you know, we, we're really cautious here. We, we don't name, try to name the Antichrist. We don't try to name the false prophet. And I don't think we should try to name Gog as well, Gog from the land of Magog. But I think that Vladimir Putin, is it, he's very Gog-esque. Would I be out right. of line to say that? No, that's a great statement. I think Joel Rosenberg. Joel came up with that once, yeah. Him. Yeah, that he's, Gog, he's Gog-alike, or he's certainly Gog-esque. Mm-hmm. If uh, Putin is not Gog, certainly if these events began to unfold quickly, the rapture taking place and all that, he, he could be Gog. Could be. But if he's not, he's paving the way for someone like Gog who will come to Russia. Uh, yeah, I mean, Putin's probably the richest man in the world. He may mm-hmm. be three times richer than Bill Gates. It, it's mm. staggering, you mm. know, the wealth that he has and the power that he has. So if these events were to unfold uh, soon in the times in which we live, then he could certainly play the role of Gog. Well, the tracks of the Russian bear lead straight to the Middle East and on to Israel. And I'm sure you cover that, Mark. I was listening here recently in the last day or so to Amir Sarfati give an online update. And, and he said that Israel has recently had the largest military drill in 20 years. And he went on to say that while the whole world is is watching North Korea, Israel is worrying about other things, including Iran and including Russia in the Middle East. And he feels that North Korea is nothing but a smokescreen. I'd like your take on North Korea as we speak. I don't think we know where this crisis, and it is a crisis, is going. And I have to say up front here, this program right now is pre-recorded. That means in the next couple of days, something horrific could happen in North Korea. And Mark, your concern is as mine, that a worst case scenario could develop in North Korea. Talk to me a little bit about how you see North Korea possibly, and emphasize possibly, fitting into a last day scenario. Well, I, I see North Korea like I do kind of with ISIS in a way. They're, they're not mentioned in the Bible specifically. Obviously, there's no specific prophecy that ISIS is fulfilling, I don't believe. I don't think there's any specific prophecy that North Korea fulfills. North Korea could be part of the kings of the east. It's mentioned in Revelation chapter 16. The Euphrates River is dried up to make the, to make their way uh, finally into the land of Israel. So North Korea, in that sense, could be part of that. We, we don't know exactly what nations will make up this end-time coalition called the Kings of the East. But I just look at our world today, and you just think about what's happening in Syria. Think about what's happening with Russia. Think about what's happening in North Korea. And these various, there's just these hot spots like this that are just developing all over the world simultaneously. And I think that's just a picture for us of just the chaos and the fear and the uncertainty of these last days as they're unfolding. And I believe certainly this is, going, this is all paving the way for the rise of the Antichrist at some point, because he's going to come forward, I believe, as a person who has some kind of a, a plan, some kind of a peace plan for Israel. But I think there'll be a lot of peace on, on the whole world for at least some brief period of time. So that's part of the way I see this is just so much, just the fomenting of chaos and fear and uncertainty. And it could be that before long, there could be the unleashing of a new era of a nuclear nightmare. Yes, there because could be. Because we don't know mm-hmm. with our government now, with President Trump, and we need to be praying for him and his military leaders of figuring out what to do, because unleashing some type of attack on North Korea would be terrible. It would be especially terrible for South Korea. And, and economically, it could be devastating and all kinds of things. But which is the lesser of two evils yes. here? Mm-hmm. And, and that's the issue that's going to have to be figured out, because the, you know the, the leader there in Korea is unstable. He's a madman. Mm-hmm. And what will he do? We, we can't allow him to get those things. 
so this could be a, a pivotal moment really in the history of the world when nuclear weapons are unleashed one way or another, both ways. We'll have to wait and see what happens, but I see this as playing into this scenario in the end that people are just going to be confused and begging for someone to come to bring yes. some semblance of peace to this world. And they're going to get that man, but it's going to be a counterfeit peace that's going to come, and he's going to be the worst nightmare of the world, ultimately, at some point in time, when the veil comes off, you know, the, the velvet glove comes off of the iron hand, and then he'll begin to dominate and to rule the world. Mm -hmm. uh, going back to, to Russia for just a moment here, because, again, I'm holding in my hands Mark's second newest book. Actually, it's a brand new book. I haven't read it. I only got it a day or two ago, Russia Rising, Tracking the Bear in Bible Prophecy, again, Amazon or your local Christian bookstore. But in it, it says, Russia is on the move. The evidence of Russia's aggression is everywhere. Newspaper headlines, magazines, internet sites, TV news, Russia's influence is gaining momentum. Like it or not, the world has been forced into a Putin-led Cold War 2.0. And so true. This man, he's trying to gobble up territory wherever he goes. But I think the fact that he's poised on Israel's northern border, in a sense, in a sense he's there, is the most troubling, next to his association with Iran, because we've got the setup there for Gog, Magog, Ezekiel 38, 39. But I just wonder how long Israel is going to tolerate Russia meddling in the Middle East. Well, well, you know, I don't really know if they have a choice really right now with that. I mean, I think Russia, there's things Israel can do against Iran, hitting their nuclear facilities and things like that. But with Russia, that's why I think uh, Netanyahu met with Putin, is he's just trying to play things out the best that he can, I'm sure. It's a terrible situation for, for Israel, and, and I really think it's a foreshadow of what's coming in the future. I mean, over 2,500 years ago, the Jewish prophet Ezekiel prophesied mm -hmm. in Ezekiel 38 that a coalition of nations would come down to Israel in, in the latter years, in the last days. And one of those nations is Russia, and one of those nations is Iran. And those two nations now have troops in Syria on Israel's northern border. Now, that was unthinkable even just a yes. few years ago. Uh, you had Syria to the north of Israel, and they were a problem for Israel. We were all prophesying. We were all saying, look, the Bible says Russia and Iran, ancient Persia, are going to come into Israel. And there they are right now on Israel's northern border. And I think this is one of the most dramatic stage-setting events that we see happening in the world today mm -hmm. uh, for, for Bible prophecy, not to mention Putin. And, you know, they've gone into Georgia and Crimea exactly. and Ukraine. You know, they're they're exactly. threatening the Baltic states. So their whole their whole view is they want to destroy Europe. They want to divide up NATO, and he wants to bring about a resurgence of the influence to, to bring back the bear, if you will, mm -hmm. to bring back the influence of the Soviet Union. That that's Putin's plan. Well, I think my point is Israel doesn't let anybody go too far with meddling in their area. It's not that long ago, 2007, where Israel. Went went into Syria and took out a nuclear reactor that was being built. Actually, I believe it was being built by North Korea, who's an ally of Iran, but it was a nuclear reactor in the heart of Syria. Israel went in in the middle of the night, took it out completely. She doesn't let people mess around in her neighborhood, and that is a bit concerning. But again, we've got wars and rumors of wars. We've got those rumors going all the time. It is. There's more of it uh, than there's ever been. Again, you've yep. got North Korea, we've got Iran, we've got Syria, we've got Russia, we've got all these various things happening at the same time, and it's just this stirring and, and wars and rumors of wars that, that the Bible tells us would be here when these things are going to come about. The situation with uh, North Korea, again, is, is a little bit more sketchy in the Bible of exactly where they fit in, mm -hmm. but we know with Iran and Russia where they fit in. Right. The Bible tells us, and so that's that's why it's very important, I think, that we understand what's happening in Russia, because on the news right now, I heard someone not long ago on the news say it's Russia, Russia, Russia. Russia. Mm -hmm. uh, they're talking about Russia all the time. But a lot of people, I think, hear that and they just think, well, that's interesting. Russia's in the news. But I think if we go back and understand Ezekiel 38 and 39, we see why that's happening right now at the same time we see a lot of these other events. Well, let me give the two books again. Again, folks, find them on Amazon or your local Christian bookstore, The Coming Apostasy, Exposing the Sabotage of Christianity from Within, Mark Hitchcock and Jeff Kinley, and Mark's newest book, Russia Rising, Tracking the Bear in Bible.
Bible prophecy. And look forward to seeing you in just a few weeks, Mark. Folks, again, uh, come on out Saturday, October the 7th. Mark Hitchcock, Amir Sarfati, Pastor J.D. Farag, Michelle Bachman. Eric and I will be there. Larry, my producer, will be there. Everyone from Olive Tree Ministries. Right outside Minneapolis, there's no cost. There's no registration needed. For those of you thinking I'd really like to be there but can't make it, we will have CDs and DVDs about a month later. Get a lunch ticket as you come in the front door of the church. Bring a lunch, whatever you like. I just plan on uh, coming out a little bit early. We start at 9 a.m., but it'd be best if you got there 45 minutes, certainly a half hour early to get the best seat in the house. Let me go out of the program here saying a little saying that I like to use now and then. And gentlemen, thank you both for being with me for the hour. When the time was right, the sea parted, the walls fell down. The lions went hungry, the sun stood still, the waves were calm, the stone was rolled away, the clouds were parted, the Lord ascended, and when the time is right, the King of Kings will return. God is never early, He's never late, He's always right on time.